What is up, everybody? SD here at Manuscripts. Today, we're going to be diving into the differences between Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid. Now, you'll see tons and tons of videos talking about which one is better for authors, all that kind of stuff. I want to take a little bit different approach to it than maybe that others have already tackled. So we're going to dive into why Grammarly, the free version of Grammarly specifically, is probably a really good option for certain things and why Pro Writing Aid really is kind of the primo version of a software that authors should be using for their books. Now, again, there's pros and cons to each, and we're going to dive into each of those. I'll be sharing my screen and showing you guys exactly what it is that I'm talking about, make it super easy for you guys to understand. So without any further ado, let's go. This is Grammarly. This is the home page. So when you first log in to your free Grammarly account, uh, this is all going to be blank and it's going to ask you if you want to create a new document or import a document. And then the suggestions remaining are basically how many things are left to correct within each document. So this is a sample that I have uh, pulled from the first chapter of my book, The City of Snow and Stars, to use kind of uh, as show and tell. Now you can see that immediately it's pulling up that there is a punctuation missing, okay? And now here's the thing to know about Grammarly. And honestly for Pro Writing Aid and really any other suggestive software is that it is not always going to be correct. I cannot repeat that enough. You really, really have to do your due diligence and, and look at what the suggestions are. So for this one in particular, you can see, you know, Trinia moves back to the hall and continued through the endless maze of passageways and until at last she reached the grand stair. Now it's saying that I need a comma until at last comma, she reached the grand stair, but that doesn't really flow correctly. So uh, in this instance, that would be something that I would not add. Uh, and you can see that there are several suggestions. So it's replacing a word. So dignitaries like it did during the, during the old empire. And it's saying, you know, dignitaries as it did in the old empire, that would be something that, yeah, I would, I would make that correction. It, it flows a little bit better. And so I would just simply click on it and accept it. And now you can see that it has put it into there. Now, this one is picking up on the fact that there's an an versus just a. So I would accept that. And you can see that over here, my correctness is going up. My overall score is improving. Uh, clarity needs some issues. So in the collapse in a span of it's saying it might be uh, redundant. So if I wanted to be concise, which I don't, then I would get rid of that. Now, engagement is something that is obviously going to be for premium. I don't know that when I was using this, I really saw much of a difference um, with engagement, uh, nor with the delivery. Now, it's saying that there's, you know, punctuation issues uh, in compound and complex sentences, some of the word choices, intricate text, wordy sentences, unclear sentences, etc. And then it's highlighting those for me so I can see like, oh my gosh, there's all of this stuff that's wrong. I should totally go and, you know, buy the premium version. No, I'm not going to do that, nor would I actually recommend it. Now, some of the interesting things about goals here is it can tailor the writing suggestions based on your goals and your audience. Some of these things I would say are experimental at best. Uh, now, generally, when if you're going to be using the free version of Grammarly, then I recommend having it set as knowledgeable. You can either do general or up to expert. Uh, expert, I don't think that you really need. Knowledgeable, you're not. People aren't stupid, so I would recommend. You know, requires slight focus to read. Formality, 
You can change to informal, so it allows slang and more casual usage. Neutral, which is, you know, just a default. And then formal, which is, you know, it's going to restrict a lot of slang terms and stuff like that. So I usually go with neutral. And then the domain, this unfortunately is a premium uh, addition. And typically I would be doing creative. And with creative, you're going to be focusing in on more of those fictional elements. So unfortunately you can't really change that unless you're paying for it. And we'll get to the prices later. So for now you're stuck with general. Now the intent, this is what they list as experimental. Now I always set it up to describe and tell a story. Why? Well, because that's usually my weak point. I want to make sure that I'm actually telling a story to my readers. So it's going to kind of hone in on some of those things. Now, the problem is that I'm having these very creative-esque uh, intentions, but I can't actually choose creative, which is kind of counterproductive. So if I click done, then I'm gonna go up to my overall score. And this is actually where I think the benefit of using Grammarly really, really comes into play because it allows you to build a slightly cleaner first draft and help you really kind of understand what you're trying to do with your book. Now, the key things to focus in on here is the amount of words that you have in any particular chapter and the read time for that particular chapter. So for instance, when I'm doing my first draft, and especially when I was doing my first draft within Grammarly itself, I was making sure that my read time always came out to about 10 to 15 minutes. And on average, that came out to around uh, 1,500 to 2,500 words uh, for the most part. So if you're wanting to learn how to build your book and have a specific read time in mind that helps create a bingeable factor to your book, then you're definitely going to want to be focusing on read time. Now, in addition to that, um, I don't really worry about sentence length or word length. The big thing is the readability score. So this is based on uh, the Flesh Reading Ease test. Higher scores indicate material that is easier to read. So it tells you down below your text is likely to be understood by a reader who has at least a seventh grade education or 12 years old. And it should be easy for most adults to read. This is important, particularly if you are trying to write YA. That is because the average American has a seventh grade or below reading level. So if you're wanting to write YA or things that are just easier to understand in general, then you're going to want to make sure that you have a high readability score. Now we're going to uh, pull back out of here and we're going to go over to Grammarly's pricing page. And we're going to talk a little bit about the pricing structure that they have. So as you can see, they've got three different tiers. The first one is free, then you got premium and then up to business. Um, what you're getting is just your very basic spelling, grammar and punctuation under the free version. For premium, you're getting everything in free plus fluency, readability, word choice. Honestly, that's uh, that is a, a helpful one. Plagiarism detection. Um, I've used it. I, I can't say that it was all that great. Inclusive language, formality level, and then some additional um, advanced suggestions. And you can kind of see here where um, across the board, those fall into correctness, clarity, engagement, etc. And, you know, there's not a ton that you're getting in the premium version, uh, if I'm being honest. Most of the stuff that when I was paying for Grammarly was the punctuation. Now, there's still some punctuation level stuff that they're not giving you in the free version, 
but the vast majority of it you are getting. So it, to me, the it's not necessarily worth that. Now let's look at the, the price. So this is starting at $12 a month. Well, that is based on the annual plan, which is a one-time payment of $144. You can also pay quarterly or monthly. So you're looking at, you know, 30 bucks a month for this. Now, I don't recommend Grammarly in the annual plan or at the monthly level. You're simply not getting what you're paying for. Uh, you know, word choice is probably the single most helpful thing, but that's not in and of itself worth $144. All right, so that's kind of the look at Grammarly. Now let's dive into real quickly uh, some of the pros and cons of Grammarly because it, it is a helpful tool. Really, I think the, the best thing about Grammarly is the easy to use interface. It is very simple. It is very kind of pulled back. Um, it's easy to see what you have going on in terms of the alerts, your score, the goals that you have selected. Um, I really like that about Grammarly. I like that it is very, very simple. Um, number two is that there are very few distractions uh, because everything is right there. You know, they have down at the, the bottom in kind of just a very light gray text, you know, H1, H2 tags, paragraph formatting. You can do bullet points and number lists. All of that is down there, but it's very unobtrusive, which I like. I really do like that. Um, and it's got the helpful goals. And you can see the score for each chapter, blog post, whatever it is that you're working on. You can see that very, very clearly. I love how easy it is to see what your score is and what your readability score is and what the read time is. I love that feature is how I have built my books. Okay. Now that being said, uh, one of the biggest cons, and if you do a search for, you know, Grammarly, you're going to find videos that are talking about it's bad recommendations and they're not wrong. Um, sometimes you're just like, wow, Grammarly, go home. You're drunk. It's, it's not good. It's not pretty. And you're just sitting there wondering like, what even is this suggestion? So as with all of them, anything that's like Grammarly, Pro Writing Aid, Hemingway, all of those, you have to take everything with a very healthy dose of salt because more often than not, they're going to not understand what it is because it's all based on an algorithm, okay? So the algorithm is not a human. And this is why I tell people um, to not rely on this type of software for copy editing is because I would say seven out of 10 times, it's probably giving you a bad recommendation. So I, that's, that's kind of the big one. Um, two, the price is very high. Um, for everything that you're getting, and, rem and remember, I've used the premium version of Grammarly, and I did it for several years. And it wasn't until I actually made the switch over to Pro Writing Aid that I was like, huh, I've been paying a lot for a lot less than what I was getting for that. I hate doing that. I hate feeling like I wasted money. And when it comes to paid things, I want to make sure that you guys make the best possible choice that you can with your funds because that is what we're here to do we're help we're here to help you try and save money and do things in a way that is not going to break the bank that's not good for anybody the final one is that the advanced help that is really the most beneficial i would say which is kind of the word choice you know choosing different words for you giving replacement suggestions that falls under the subscription and honestly for $30 a month and, and that, uh, $144 a month, I don't know if it, I, to me, that's not worth it for you guys. And I, and I can't recommend that. So with that in mind, let's talk about 
Pro Writing Aid. We are in the homepage of Pro Writing Aid. Now, as you can see here, we are looking at the different samples, the different documents and all that kind of stuff that I have in my Pro Writing Aid account. And I have created a sample, but basically this is how it's gonna be listed out um, when you begin building out your documents. Now you can either do it as a grid pattern, which is very similar to what Grammarly has, or just a simple list. Now we're gonna go ahead and just click on sample and go into the one that I have created here. And it is going to be the exact same text that I used for the Grammarly example. And we're gonna kind of see what it's gonna show up as. Now I am using the lifetime subscription. So it's a premium subscription. Um, you cannot have a free version of Grammarly um, long term. You can get it for a very short period of time. Um, but outside of that, yeah, you'll have to pick a payment plan. So just so you know that what you're seeing here is actually what a premium pa uh, plan will look like. Now I tried to get as close as I could to the same settings as Grammarly. So I picked general. Their goals are a little different in pro writing aid. So you're seeing that it's showing that there are five reports. So this is showing up. It's saying it's missing the possible preposition. Um, down here, it's yelling at me for my passive verb usage, which it does a lot. Uh, you got some more passive verbs. Now, granted, those were not showing up in Grammarly, and I suspect that was probably under their advanced or premium versions. Uh, you can see that this one is picking up the same. So I have an an when it should just be a, and if I want to change that, boom, done. And it's also saying the readability may be enhanced if I remove this. Essentially, it's it's pro writing aids version of hey you're being too wordy here now you can see over here that i have uh grammarly and spelling so it's saying that like hey there's no mistakes found um for that uh style and uh style guide compilation so you can actually create your own style guide here uh, it's talking about the sentence length uh, of the overall document. So I only have 300 and some odd words here, so it's not picking up on everything in that chapter. So that would skew this um, quite a bit. So readability is telling me that, you know, grade 10 or lower is where my writing is at, which is fabulous. I write YA, that's exactly where I want it to be. And then the sentence variety. My passive voice is within what they would deem like, you know, the safe zone, you know, suggest a score less than 25. So I'm doing good there. But you can see all of the different things here uh, that is much more in depth than Grammarly. Now, this is where I love pro writing aid is that I can set the goals and you can see that it's got general, it's got academic. So if I choose academic, you can see that I have several different, I have a book review, a critique, compare and contrast essay, and it's gonna change how they measure the goals based on what I choose. Now, creative is where I live, and before it was just a very generic creative. Now they've actually added genre specific things in here, which is super, super helpful. So I could go down and choose young adult, um, but since I'm writing a fantasy, I actually want it to focus more on fantasy. Now you can see that uh, this changed considerably and it's telling me that while my readability was great before, now I'm off the mark. So it says reduce your average sentence length and word length to improve readability. Uh, sentence variety is off now. Uh, glue index is still very high. Weak adverbs is there. So you can see that my goals, which were looking pretty good, have now shifted. Now in many respects, so will the word choices that it recommends over here. Not always, um, but there is sometimes when if you move between, let's say fantasy, and we go down to YA, 
it may show that there is a difference in the reported issues. Now, it doesn't seem like there is at this point in time. So let's just go back to fantasy and get that on there. Now for reports, this is reading it in real time. You can also create a summary, which will be a very broad overview of everything based on grammar, writing style, sentence length, readability, sentence structure, pacing, consistency, sticky sentences, repeats, and dialogue tags. Now, this is a very extensive thing, and I'm not going to show you all of it uh, in detail, but I'm just going to kind of scroll through here and kind of give you the general idea of what you can uh, expect. It really dives into the nitty gritty of your writing. This is where Pro Writing Aid excels, right? So this is showing me all of the information that I need to know to help improve my writing. And they give you really great advice. To keep your reader's attention, you need to use sentences of different lengths, 100% accurate. Some should be long and flowing, while others should be short and to the point. If the every single sentence in the document is the same length or close to it, your reader will get bored. This is accurate. Uh, you want ebb and flow to your sentence structure. Now, some of the other reports, um, you got style, grammar, uh, thesaurus, overused words, combos, all repeats, echoes. This is going to find um, things where you use it back to back. So you can see the endless maze, uh, the endless sky. Uh, she reached the, she reached down here, looked, look, like, like. The, the upper quarter, the upper quarter, empire, empire, years, years. So it will show you where you've repeated and then you can go back through your manuscript and fix some of these issues, right? Because it's going to bring up suggestions. So repeated phrase. So it's the infinite, the constant, the eternal, the indeterminable, like the boundless, like that is some great recommendations, right? Um, you also have structure. So it's going to help you and give suggestions on, you know, sentence starts with the subject, um, breaking it up into sentence start with subordinate conjunctions, and it breaks it down over here as well. Uh, length, transition, readability. This is going to be very similar uh, to Grammarly's, um, but it's going to be a little bit different in the sense that uh, it's giving you still giving you the estimated read time. It's giving you that the document is easy to read. It'll break it down here based on several different versions of reading tests. Um, and it'll also tell you which one is the most difficult to read. And you can see here that it's highlighted it. So in order to do that, I would need to go back and kind of work on it a little bit. So for instance, sticky sentence checks, um, it's going to highlight those to so reduce the number of glue words and the glue words are back to the and through of until so like all of those it can break up the flow of the sentence so it's going to give you some recommendations on how to kind of fix that and then it's got more um reports cliches diction pro, uh, pronoun alliteration homonym consistency acronym dialogue pacing century house and plagiarism so you're I hope you guys are getting the sense of like how many reports there are in this. Um, you can change the uh, language. You can uh, make the adjustments to the document type here as well. You can even do script, which is pretty cool. And then you can break it out into the app settings. So, and it'll break it down into like what you're, what it's gonna be showing more often than not. Now, uh, that's kind of the overview of Pro Writing Aid. Let's head over to their pricing page. So, Pro Writing Aid, the prices. You can see here that a monthly subscription to Pro Writing Aid is $20 per month. The yearly subscription is $179, and they actually have the option for a lifetime purchase. Now, this is the one that I ended up doing uh, on a sale that they had. 
And so if you kind of keep an eye on Pro Writing Aid, you sign up for their newsletter, you can get notifications of when uh, they have those discounts going. They do it at least two or three times a year. Um, so I do highly recommend that if you're wanting to upgrade to the lifetime. Now, since Grammarly doesn't have a lifetime membership, we're gonna focus on the yearly subscription and the monthly subscription. The yearly subscription for Grammarly, as you remember, is $144. So you're looking at $79 for pro writing aid. And I just went through and showed you all of the reports. Those reports are more in depth than anything that you will see with the premium version of Grammarly. I can promise you that. So you're not only getting it for nearly half the price, it is also getting you a lot more that is going to benefit you as an author and help you grow and learn to focus your craft a little bit more. Now, if you're like, okay, I can't do the yearly subscription, there's a monthly one at $20 a month, which is $10 less than the monthly version of Grammarly. So again, it is what is the value you are getting based on the price? And to me, as an author, Pro Writing Aid is the best option. Now, I actually still use the version of uh, the free version of Grammarly because sometimes Grammarly will actually show up with suggestions inside of Pro Writing Aid, which I kind of find humorous, um, especially if you're doing it in the uh, the browser. Now, I typically use the extension of Pro Writing Aid in my Word documents as I'm writing, and so it's making those suggestions as I go versus in the actual browser. So there is that, and I do highly recommend uh, doing those. And then I believe down here, yes, the academic pricing for Pro Writing Aid. So if you are a student, an active student, then you can get 20% off of Pro Writing Aid Premium. So if you have the option to do that, please take advantage of that. That is a huge, huge win for you. Now, uh, one of the other big things is that for the lifetime, so the one payment includes all updates, which I can attest to. I, I get consistent updates at least once a month for um, Pro Writing Aid. Uh, is that it lasts for like 50 years. And so like, I'm gonna be old and senile by the time my subscription to this ends, which is pretty fantastic. So I'm basically gonna use it for the whole the whole of my life and then get too crazy to, you know, resubmit and buy another one. So if you have the opportunity, I do recommend waiting until it's on sale because then it falls usually around 50 to 40% off. And you can then get the lifetime version and then you don't have to pay for it. Like it's just the one and done. So again, it's that what's the benefit over the long run? I would say in this case, it's pro writing aid. So that is some of the major differences between pro writing aid and Grammarly and why I personally, as an author who uses this on a daily basis, recommend getting pro writing aid. But let's kind of dive into some of the pros and cons. So first and foremost is that as a pro, it is way more in depth. As you could see, like I spent more time on pro writing aid because there is more to pro writing aid than there is to Grammarly that is gonna benefit you as an author. It has better reports, better data, all of that good stuff. And it gives you the breakdown and that summary of what does your writing actually look like, okay? So very, very beneficial. Uh, next is that it's got better tools. For the goals, you can set it up to the genre that you are writing in. And they have tailored it in such a way that, again, still an algorithm, still gonna have some really funky suggestions. And trust me, I get a lot of them and I just ignore them. Uh, but it is gonna be way better for you to have those suggestions versus the general suggestions in Grammarly. That is gonna help you improve your writing, okay? Uh, next is that overall, it's less expensive 
like far less expensive. If you were to take Grammarly, right? And it's $144. Uh, let's just say you're, you're going to use it for two years, right? So that's $288. If you were to use Grammarly for three years, you're spending $432 over the course of those three years. Whereas if you were to, in a lump sum, get pro writing aid for $400, you're saving $32 and it's a one-time thing and it goes for 50 years. You see what I'm saying? Now, for some of the cons, pro writing aid, despite being absolutely amazing, is incredibly difficult to get set up for authors. You don't just jump into it and just and it just starts working, right? You have to be very, very, very intentional about how you set it up. And I actually, on my own personal YouTube channel, I actually created a in-depth tutorial on how to set pro writing aid up for authors. We're gonna link that up here in the top right corner. So if you guys want to check that out, it's about an hour long, but I dive into how to set up the reports, how to use the reports much more in depth than we are able to cover in this video. So definitely go and check that out. Uh, second is that it can be a little overwhelming. You know, you're getting there because there are a lot more reports. There's the goals on the side. There's improvement suggestions. There's all those things popping up on the screen. It could be a little overwhelming. Whereas Grammarly is really nice in that it is simple and you're not overwhelmed by all of the things, okay? So that is one of the cons that I would pin on Pro Writing Aid. Um, then the other big con is that there's no free version. Um, you know, outside of like a week trial, um, maybe they've upped it to a two week trial, I didn't see when I was looking, then you're gonna have to pay for it. And if you're really wanting to dive into it and save money, um, you know, Again, even if you're just going to use it for a couple of months as you go through and edit, you're still going to pay less than you would signing up for Grammarly. So you have a win-win either way. And I highly recommend that you take that in consideration. Um, they have extensions for um, Google Docs, for Scrivener, for Chrome, for Microsoft Word, for Office, like... You can literally hook it up to where it will follow you all over the internet and help you <laughs> improve your writing basically everywhere you're going. Now, I know Grammarly makes a lot of those things. You, if you guys aren't haven't seen a Grammarly ad on YouTube, like I don't know where you have been living at this point, um, but they make all those same promises. It, I don't really, uh, I don't really think that's accurate. Um, and I'm actually going to link down in the show notes to a video where a lady who is a teacher and she teaches grammar, she actually walks through the reason why Grammarly is kind of not the best in terms of a paid version and even some of the suggestions that it gives. Now, I don't believe she touches on uh, pro writing aid, uh, but I found it very, very educational. So I hope you would too. So that'll be uh, linked down uh, in the show notes. So Grammarly versus pro writing aid. You've seen it. What did you think about it? Which one is your favorite? Do you use one or the other? Do you use both? Do you have questions about Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid that we can answer for you? Comment down below, let us know. And then I'm always on. So I'm always checking stuff and making sure that, you know, things are getting answered as, as quickly as humanly possible. So if you have any questions for me specifically about Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid, drop them down in the comments. Happy to answer them for you. If you haven't already, go down, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that way you get updated when we go live with our live streams on Mondays and Thursdays for coffee chats and when we upload new and amazing content that we have lots more coming for you guys. So S from SD and manuscripts, take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.